From the age of energy to the age of space, Dr. Leo Steg is the manager of the General Electric Space Sciences Laboratory. Dr. Steg, how will the exploration of space affect us? This great adventure of space exploration, perhaps the greatest one we've ever undertaken, will benefit us in our daily lives in at least three ways. First, in uh, communications. Sometime within the next two or three years, we hope to put up a satellite like this in an equatorial orbit, perhaps 6,000 miles high, going around the world like this. Ten of them, we shall beam up from a ground station, telephone messages or television programs, which can then be beamed back instantaneously to other receiving stations anywhere around the world. We have here a quarter scale model of such a device. That very good television program you saw yesterday perhaps can then be, for the first time, be seen by everybody around the world. It should also then be as easy and almost as cheap to pick up the telephone and call Istanbul and New Delhi as it is today to do this with Boston and Chicago. Secondly, in the area of weather prediction. Here, in 1964, if everything goes well, we hope to have two satellites in polar orbit and four in equatorial orbit, giving us an opportunity to do broad scale weather observation. We have here a quarter scale model of such a device. This will radio back television pictures of cloud formations and other data which are essential for good weather observation on a worldwide basis from areas over which there has never been good observation like the oceans or, or the southern hemisphere. Perhaps it will then be possible to predict whether this will be a good or bad planting season in certain areas of the world or even whether this will be a good time to look for a sunny vacation period in Florida or not. And lastly, man himself will go into space after it is reasonably safe. Now, space is not a safe place. It's a place of high vacuum, full of deadly radiation, difficult to get into, and difficult to return from. We'll have to learn to live without gravity, and it seems like we can if recent success in our flights is an indication. But our ships will have to live for a long time in a very hostile environment. We will have to supply radiation protection for man, and we will have to supply him a piece of our green planet and the atmosphere to live on. So we will have to test our vehicles before sending men out. Now, testing in space is very difficult and very expensive. So we first go through a period of testing on the ground in simulation devices. Here is one such device which has been built at General Electric's Space Technology Center at Valley Forge. It is a large chamber simulating both the vacuum, the sun, and perhaps even the radiation of outer space. It is large enough to accommodate our first manned and unmanned vehicles. So the program is as follows. We shall first test our vehicles on the ground in simulation chambers like this. We will send our unmanned vehicles out Firstly, to do useful things for us, as in navigation and communication, and then to sample and explore the environment. And after we have learned more about this, and we feel sufficiently confident, 
we shall send man out. Because man is essential if we want to go exploring. And then perhaps we shall find an answer to Fermi's famous question, where is everybody? That's a question well worth asking as we begin to understand the vastness of our universe. And if there's an answer to it, it'll be found by men like Dr. Suits and Dr. Stegg and the thousands of other dedicated men and women, scientists and engineers, who are right now working on a thousand other questions. Questions that are equally intriguing and equally vital to man's progress. <laughs>